The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 11th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but way more important than that. During this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Just send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got the Dow trading up 109 points, about a half a percent, a little bit less than half a percent to the upside. Half a percent of the upside is the S&P. That's 15 points. NASDAQ 100 up 9 tenths of a percent or 67 points. Russell's up 1 and 3 tenths percent, 21 points to the upside. Another nice day, as is uh, as, as semiconductors are also having. They're up 20 bucks or 1 and a quarter percent. So it's mean and green across the board as it should be, as it's to be expected, as you and I have discussed here for days now. Of course, part of that is because of the spot volatility index, which continues to trade lower, should continue to trade lower down into the $13-ish range. It's at $14.70, and if that is what unfolds, well, what that means is you should anticipate and expect the markets to continue to move higher. You've got gold, which is basically flat. It's up a buck sixty, no big deal there, trading out at 1500.80. It is below the bottom of its daily profile that says expect and anticipate a change in trend you've got silver down three pennies she's trained at 1815 light sweet crude is off a buck 50 that's down two and six tenths percent uh, so we've got plenty to look at of course i want to look at what you want to look at lead the charge by the way to the upside this afternoon is booking holdings that's up 22 bucks uh, Intuitive Surgical is up 19. Google's up 15. Uh, Mettler Toledo International is up $15. Zscaler, ZS is a ticker symbol down 21% or 12 bucks and change. Uh, Fair Isaac Corp down seven bucks, nearly a little over 2%. Lennox International off six and Guardian Health off a five percent out there. So the first question that came in came in earlier this morning. I mean, like 4 a.m. or so, uh, was a request to go take a look at Lightsweet Crude. So to do that. We do a couple of different things out here. One, we take a look at four different time frames, our 60-minute, our 120-minute, our five-hour, which is 300-minute, and then our daily time frame. Now, on the daily chart, we have both the daily and the weekly profiles out here. Of course, when price is above the top of a box, we'll see a green, uh, a green bar tells you that price above resistance when it is below the bottom of box tells you you have broken through support now in the case of the day we can see on the intraday time frames uh, we've seen quite a move lower over the course of the last uh, several hours four hours or so let's take a look at the daily time frame chart get a feel for what it's communicating to you and i now what we know about light sweet crude is that it had tried it attempted to break a descending trend line. It closed above that level on the 9th, and then yesterday it tested and rejected that area. And we don't know where the uh, Light Sweet Crude is going to close today, but if it does close below 56.35, uh, it's back inside the daily box. It will have been a false breakout of that trend line, and that would say to expect lower price. Now, expect lower price to where? We go right to the bottom of that profile. It would be in the 51.34 range between 
5134 and 5234. That's what Lightsweet Crude is telling us based upon its daily and its weekly profiles as well as that trend line. If I had to pull over, if I were to, which we will do, pull over Stevie's white background charts, my Ninja Trader charts with all my other proprietary tools out here, we can see the price is pushing right down into Stevie's red line. That's the oscillator and change line. So it is pushing into a support level right here. That's why the end of the day will tell you what Lightsweet Crude is really going to do. If you had a hankering to be bullish, then right now would be the time that you would buy. I'm not suggesting that at all based upon the chart patterns that I don't see out here. I don't see something that tells me we had a significant bottom back here on August the 7th. Um, and uh, based upon the uh, trend line reversal that we took a look at, I, I yeah, I, well, the only way that I could give you a buy signal right now would be to look at an intraday time frame chart. So let's go do that. Let's go take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart for light sweet crude. Of course, we're taking a look at the October contract. And the only pattern that we have out here at the moment is a, a to B equals CD to the downside. The A point out here at the uh, most recent high, that would have been, it looks like, at about 11 o'clock in the morning. That was yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. So you've got the A to B equals CD. We can see price has made the 1 to 1 1.618 price projection area. That's at 55.76. We're trading at 55.83 right now. But that doesn't mean just because we hit that level that this is a bottom. In fact, from an intraday standpoint, that being 30 minute time frame chart, I could not give you the signal to go ahead and fire away based upon the fact that price is sitting at uh, Stevie's red line on the daily time frame. You need to see some type of bullish reversal candle formation. It is not present. With it being not present, it says maybe price moves down to the next extension area of that A to B leg. And that would take us to about the 5518 area. So we're just simply watching here from an intraday standpoint uh, for some type of bullish reversal signal to suggest you should at least see some type of bounce or counter trend move out there. So light sweet crude, that's what I see. I don't uh, see a whole lot of reason to play in that area. I just, there's other vehicles that have generated better bottoming signals and so on and so forth. So hope that helps you out. I believe that was Vicky that uh, wrote in earlier. Now let's go take a look. There's no other questions that I see at the moment. So let's go take a look at the equity markets. And it's interesting where we're at. In fact, let's go take a look at the cash indices. Some of you may have caught this morning's nine o'clock show. I was doing Larry's show this morning as I have the last couple of days. Won't be doing it tomorrow or Friday, but I believe I'm back doing a show on Monday and uh, uh, Tuesday out there. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that that is the uh, case. Uh, so but what's interesting about the equity indice charts out here, let's take a look at the S&P as an example. Today is going to be, or appears that it's going to be, day number nine or bar number nine of the TD setup nine count. Now, what you and I know is that on bars eight, nine to the bar following nine, as long as eight, nine, or 10 are making the highest tie inside that pattern, that can be a reversal area. So it says we need to be on guard today. We need to be on guard tomorrow out here inside the S&P 500. Now, what the S&P 500 has not done thus far, after Stevie's red line turned green about four trading sessions ago, typically you will see that level and price catch up to each other, that level right now being 29.46. It's not my call just yet. I say it's not my call. I'm not making that call. I'm not suggesting you go short the market. I'm suggesting that we need to be paying attention today and tomorrow specifically for a potential for some type of retracement to begin, at least back to Stevie's green line. We'll take a look at the other cash indices as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFN. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk.
risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, Dow's up 119, S&P 15. Kevin writes in and says, for those who missed a big part of this upturn, uh, do you see another pullback soon? And if so, uh, where do you see strong support in the Dow and a good area to buy? So, um, look, we just looked at the S&P 500. Let's pull over the Dow Jones chart out here. Um, and you'll see all the indices right now today. It looks like all of them. Yeah, all of them are doing the same thing. Well, by the same thing, well, some are in day eight, some are in day nine. Uh, looks like no. It looks like we're all in day nine here. Nine, nine count of the nine count bar out here. So you'll see yesterday was day number eight, um, uh, Kevin, in, inside the daily chart for the uh, Dow. We know on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So that could be Thursday. There could be some type of high. Now, specifically in the Dow, first of all, I want you to sell tops and buy bottoms. And when this pattern shows up, that's what I want you to really focus on and pay attention to, because you're asking the question, where's a good area to buy? Let the market communicate to you what its intent is. For example, when the Dow went ahead and formed a, a bottom down here on June 3rd, June 4th, and I remember you know, everything looked like all oh, heck was gonna break loose, you know, the world was coming to an end. Of course, you and I knew that that wasn't the case. We just knew that the Dow was being stretched to the downside unreasonably so was doing it with less energy, even though it was making a lower low. That's how bottoms are formed. And then uh, and that's what creates that where it's one of the elements of the Rose Momentum Indicator pattern out there. You then get the bullish reversal signal on June 4th. That was your sign that, okay, the buyers were out there in force. They didn't tell us whether they were going to win the battle or not, but we knew that the cavalry had arrived on shore. And that is very important. And that says, okay, uh, the bulls now should have the ball, and you're going to go ahead and take that move on the the, uh, bulls out here. Price was above Stevie's red line and green line, really remained above that in for the in, for its entirety until we got into the July 24th, July 25th time frame. July 25th, by the way, was a key reversal session. That is a bearish reversal candle. And that was confirming the Rose Momentum Indicator top that had generated July 23rd. Then when a bottom forms out here, and this bottom forms, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. We can monitor it to watch for this, but certainly on August 15th and the 16th, it was the 16th, when the Dow generated that bottom signal. Again, the same pattern. It just is like rinse, repeat, do it over again. We don't have that pattern 
right now. We are not going to see roads momentum indicator top tomorrow. That much I can guarantee you. We're nowhere near that. But what we do have is we do have that TD set up nine count to the downside, where 27,281.65 is resistance. Typically, when a nine count pattern forms and it's below a prior resistance level, you expect to see uh, a turn in the market. Now, the turn in the market here for the Dow could simply take you down to Stevie's Greenland. It's 26,504 right now. Two days from now, that number will be different than the number I give you right now, but it will be in the general vicinity, so to speak. Now, this is going to be hard for us to call. This, this top, should it form, is going to be hard for us to call, and I'll show you some of the reasons why. But what I want you to do is now is not the time to enter. That's for sure. You're not going to enter when you're close to the potential of a topping signal out here in the markets. And all the markets are doing the same thing. That was the Dow. Here, let me pull over the New York Stock Exchange. Here, you'll see the New York Stock Exchange, a higher high today, uh, bar number nine of the TD set up a nine count pattern out here. Uh, let's take a look at, let's look at the semis. They're having a nice strong day out here. What are the semis doing? The semis have recycled, if you will, to wave number seven. That's literally H on my screen. We know there is no such thing as wave number H. So we'll we'll go ahead and get rid of that. We'll go ahead and change it out to blue out there. It's wave number D, wave number four. But really what it is is bar number nine today of that TD set of nine count as price comes back into a prior high out there. Now look, these patterns don't always identify the top or the bottom. But when they do show up, we do pay attention. If you take a look at the bottom that formed back in the May time frame for the semiconductor, it was with the TD set up nine count. That was the signal. That was the pattern that is out there. It's the reason that we're focused and paying attention uh, today, tomorrow. What do you do if you're long? You just make sure that you've adjusted your stops. Take a, look at the, take a look at the transports out here. What are the transports? They are in bar number nine as well. Every single, now in the case of the transports, Stevie's green line or red line turned green. Typically the phenomenon Phenomena is that price and that level will catch up to each other. That could be the buy point into the Dow or the transports out there. Um, you know, we just have to take things one step at a time. And uh, so it's impossible uh, for me to give you an accurate forecast. I'd rather wait to see what patterns are playing out to then make that determination. If we take a look at the Wilshire 5000, where is it at? Bar number nine. Uh, so everything is at bar number nine. It's done it in unison out here, whether it's the Russell 2000 whether it's the NDX, it doesn't, whether it's a NASDAQ composite, it doesn't really matter. They all are doing the same thing right now. So why is it that Stevie is saying that this is going to be difficult, in essence, to really call a top out here? And I'd say the real reason is because the spot volatility index is not done doing what it needs to do out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that simple out here. What do you mean it's not done doing what it needs to do, Stevo? Well, what it really needs to do, it needs to get down to this yellow line. Line on the very bottom of my screen. Yesterday was priced at 1310 or 1309. Today it's 1311. The spot volatility index is 1469 right now. Um, now, maybe it gets down there into that 1311 area. We see the markets move higher again tomorrow, bar number 10. That's normal. And then the whole combination might come together. In fact, what we might see is we might just see the advanced decline oscillated reading stall at 150. It's at 149.21 right now. I do not know what the end of day reading is, but there are plenty of what I call plus 150 failures out here. Last time we saw a plus 150 failure uh, really took place on June the 20th. We saw a bit of a move lower, then a move higher again. That move higher generated a topping signal for the New York Stock Exchange in the way that prices moved higher, but its advanced decline oscillator was not making a higher high. It was making a lower high. That, too, was a signal. That eventually led to a consolidation and a final breakdown. Of course, we know that the bottom that formed in the NYSE was the exact opposite pattern. The advanced decline oscillator reading was making higher lows in the face of lower lows with regard to price. So we don't have one of those patterns that is present right now, uh, Kevin, inside the New York Stock Exchange, but we do watch the plus 150 area, but we certainly watch that spot volatility index. And it really does need to push its way down to the bottom of that Bollinger Band, where tops can form in the marketplace out there. Uh, so that would also say, hey, we could go take a look at shorter-term timeframes. On the shorter-term timeframes, are there any signals out there 
there. That's an excellent question. To answer that question, we just pull over Stevie's market analyzer. Now, I know that the uh, data here is going to be a little bit small, but you can see uh, some of the futures contracts that we take a look at. You've got the equity futures. You've got gold, silver, light sweet crude, natural gas, and the 30-year treasury. In this case here, you've got your 30-minute, your one-hour, your two-hour, your five-hour time frames out here. Now, in each of those, what I have listed is what is the market condition. You'll see on the 30-minute chart, everything is in a breakout bull mode in the equity futures contract. Same thing in the one hour, same thing in the two hour, same thing in the five hour time frame. What does that mean? That means that price is above all levels of resistance out there. And in doing so, what we don't see on a 30 minute time frame, a one hour, a two hour, with the exception being the Dow, we could take a look at that, or the five hour, we don't see a Rhodes momentum topping signal. So the short-term time frames, which is where you would see a top form first, doesn't have it out there. Maybe this time the TD setup nine count is not going to show us a top, but where a new level of support would be. Steve Rhodes with TFN. It's not going to be easy to call this next top. Not too easy. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. 
kickoff, folks. So well, one of our donors asked to take a look at the market breadth for the uh, NASDAQ. And, and what we do have here, Coda, is the uh, market breadth for the NDX 100. And that comes to us uh, via our folks over at uh, uh, TAS Market Profiles. And so here what this is helping you and I understand for those 108 or 9 constituents that are inside here, this is the weekly time frame, by the way, that we're looking at first here. Uh, we've got 50, or it has 50 issues trading above the top of its box and only 18 below the bottom of its box. So percentage-wise, nearly 50% above the top and 17.5% and, and below the bottom. This is really strong market breadth. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, so the market breadth inside, and this, uh, this flipped on September 1st, I believe, was when it switched back to uh, bullish out here. Um, in between that, we had a bit of a little consolidation. If we take a look at the daily time frame out here, you're going to see that this uh, uh, punched through to the bullish side back on August 29th with its crossover. Uh, here you've got 62%, 61%, I apologize, of the uh, constituents trading above the top of the daily and only 20 below the bottom. It's why yesterday I was saying, don't be short. Don't be short the NASDAQ or don't be short the S&P 500. The market breadth was just too strong out there. And so it, it, it just there, it was, there were no cracks in the armor, so to speak, out here. The pullback that we saw in the NDX 100, that was normal, natural, because TV's red line had turned green. We'll go ahead and pull that NQ chart up there again so you can take a look at it. So what was unfolding was normal and natural. What you and I talked about for the cash indices and our expectation that that will also unfold. But we've got to really navigate this one step at a time out here. Here, take a look at the four-hour time frame chart out here, Coda, where it's going to flip back and forth a little bit more often. But here, as of uh, yesterday, 12 noon, this thing is in bullish mode out here. And if you go to the short, shorter-term one-hour duration, uh, this shows us, again, yesterday at 2 p.m., everything went back to uh, bullish. So market breadth for the NASDAQ 100 is, is very strong. In, in this is this is based upon our reading of the uh, Taz market breadth uh, system out here. If we take a look at the S and P 500, uh, give me a moment. We'll pull up that uh, chart, that tool out here. You're going to see. You'll see it if I can actually grab it. Here we go. So here we're going to take a look at just let's do the same thing. Hopefully that's OK with you. If we take a look at uh, market breadth again, market breadth when you are above resistance. That's what this is doing, or below support. Above resistance, it's bullish. It's in a breakout mode. Below resistance, it's bearish. It's in, directionally speaking, it is in a breakdown mode. You've got of the, uh, you've got 48 percent, 48 percent of the issues inside the S&P 500 on a weekly time frame are above resistance, and 11.13 percent below the bottom on a weekly basis. This is super strong market breadth. It could get stronger, certainly, but it's super strong market breadth. Hey, the week daily time frame, you've got 64% above the top of a daily box and 16 below the bottom. It's why any dips are being bought out here. It's just super strong market breadth. If somebody is telling you that the market breadth is weak out there, I don't know what it is that they're looking at. Well, they're not looking at this. One thing we can be certain of, they're certainly not looking at the bullish crossovers for the S&P and for the NDX 100. And yes, this is not going to call the top and it's not going to call the bottom. But assuming that you've missed those two things you're in the middle of the sandwich, this tells you it's pretty meaty out here. Take a look at the four hour time frame chart again, bullish market breadth, the one hour time frame chart. It's been bullish market breadth in the S&P since uh, September the uh, 3rd out here. So market breadth is is very strong. Market breadth in the New York Stock Exchange, let me close that out here, uh, yeah, is also very, very strong. That advanced decline oscillator getting up to the plus 150, it's plus 151.26. The fact is a close above 150, and that's possible today. Day, any close above 150, the plus 150 level, tells us that we have higher prices to come. Doesn't mean tomorrow, but whenever you see a reading above 150, it and you go back and you research this, you will see that we have seen higher prices. Now, of course, somebody could say, man, that's fairly easy to make that decision, Steve. Oh, my goodness, we're only 1% away from the high, all time highs out here. I know, but still go back and take a look at it. Now, I don't know if I have on this chart here the advanced decline line. Let me see if I do. It may be on another chart out there, maybe during a break. 
No, I do have it here. So let's go ahead and put that up. So where are we on the advanced decline line? We're at a new all-time high today. So again, it, it, when you are at a new all-time high in the advanced decline line, it tells you that market breadth inside the entire community, inside the New York Stock Exchange of stocks out there, is extremely positive, is extremely bullish. And that's what it's telling us. This is also the advanced decline line, the lack of any kind of divergence. Divergence would be uh, the advanced decline is not making higher highs in the face of price making higher highs. That pattern doesn't exist out here right now. So it, we're very market breadth uh, positive out here. It's why we take a look at the seasonal cycle, but we don't use the seasonal cycle as religion. We use chart patterns. We use chart patterns, simple tools, um, that took me a long time to figure out and learn, that's for sure. But I, in listening to the show and me sharing with you what it is that I share with you, it means you don't have to invest those thousands of hours. You can just pick up the work where I've got it, figure out ways to improve upon it. And trust me, I'm certain that this can be improved upon. It's always about improving things out there, always. But right now, all the signals to all of the listeners out there, to you, Coda in the Den, who is asking about it, I don't see anything but strong market breadth everywhere. Again, market breadth is not going to help us to identify a top. The advanced decline oscillator reading at the plus 150, that's a different story because that has a history for us to go back and say, okay, this is the time where the sphincter muscle of the bulls needs to tighten up just a tad. Tighten up just simply means make sure you put stops in place. I can't know for certain what the exact next move is going to be. I don't know what tweet might come out. By the way, the tweets typically come out between noon and two, and they typically kind of, uh, I guess historically somebody went back and did a study on this. I think it was Bloomberg or somebody. I read an article somewhere over the past uh, week or so. Uh, and one o'clock seems to be the, uh, the, the, the average tweet time out there. Um, I, I, so I don't know what might impact the markets next, but with the market breath so strong out there, um, you know, taking short trades, it's just really not the signal that's being present out here. Doesn't mean we're going to ignore those um, those topping signals. It's just a signal as we speak out here. And we have to use all. That's why I said calling the top this time, right now specifically, is not going to be an easy thing to do. We've just gone through this little checklist here. I get a little more comfortable and maybe trying to identify top if that spot volatility index was down in the 13, 11 area at the same time that we're getting to a TD setup nine count. I'd certainly feel much better with calling it top or bottom if the road's momentum indicator signal was present, but it, it's not. And we just have to go with what we've got out here. If we take a look at the ES mini, this says to you and I, it's headed to 3014, 3030. If we take a look at the NQ, if it can close above 7881, it's going to make another run for its all time highs. And the Dow Equity Futures contract, it's already headed back to its all time highs. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So, uh, Coda, I know you were showing the NYS or the uh, NASDAQ composite out there. So, the only thing I can pull up here for you for the NASDAQ composite is its advanced decline oscillator uh, reading out here. I do have a way to get the advanced decline date. I couldn't do it during the uh, commercial out here. Um, uh, you know, but I did see that you had posted something uh, with regard to with regard to that. So, uh, but here what we can see about the advanced decline oscillator, you know, it too is rising out here. It's almost back to a, a high from back in January of 2018. So again, this is market breath, uh, very positive here inside the NASDAQ uh, composite. But that doesn't mean that this thing is not also um, possibly making a top. We have to just simply pay attention to that, uh, to those TD uh, set up a nine count uh, out there. And, we'll, and where we will see some type of, if there is a change in trend, we'll see it uh, t typically, we'll see it show up, for example, on the intraday time periods. So as one example out here, let's just go to the NQ as, as that example, and let's stay here. So for the NQ, what you need to start seeing is you need to start seeing levels of support being broken. These are breakout areas of support. So inside the NQ, as an example, that level is going to be 7805 to 7798. The 7798 was tested earlier this morning. Uh, that was a breakout area. It was tested. It was rejected and price and screamed to the upside. Of course, we had already known that the NASDAQ. So the NQ, here's where things get a little bit uh, tricky. So in the case of the NQ, what we can say is that yesterday was a test, that expected test of price and Stevie's green line. When that line changes color, red to green out here, tells us of an impending move in uh, price. Uh, well, it, it tells us of an impending connection between Price and Stevie's uh, green line at this stage here. Now, the NQ itself has not generated a, a TD setup a nine count pattern. So maybe the futures will provide us with uh, better information out here. But it's only the NQ. The ES I can see has. I'm looking off this screen here to my right, to my other screens. The, the Dow has and the Russell has. But the, the NQ at seven itself hasn't. But So here's the divergence, so to speak speak. And what the NQ has done that the others haven't done is come back and pulled back in and in essence tested that level. When it tested and rejected that level yesterday, that was a bullish test. So 
says that price wants to be moved higher. And what we do is we put that together with what else was going on inside the markets yesterday, inside the NQ specifically, which was the NQ broke above its consolidation on September 5th. On September this 9th, a few days ago on Monday, price pulled back to test that level. When you break above a resistance area, consolidation on top of the consolidation would be resistance. You'd love to see price come back and test it and reject it to tell you it wants to move higher. That is exactly what took place yesterday. During the day, most certainly price was below that area, but by the end of the trading session, that's what's important, price had rejected the top of the consolidation. We had another test of that area this morning. Price has rejected it. This says to us that if the NQ is going to do what normal breaks of consolidations do, this is where things get tricky here then what we should see unfold is a measured move up to 82.35. I don't make these rules up. I just share with you the rules that exist out there, and they work really good. So what's all that nine count uh, malarkey about out there? This is where we're going to have to be watching like those intraday time frame charts to be looking for signals out there, early signals. In the case of the Dow, it's broken through that consolidation. It appears to want to head to 27,548. The measured move. It could go beyond that because measured because consolidation projections, price projections, are equal to or greater than the consolidation. I've only put in the equal to consolidation. And inside the Russell 2000, who knew how it was going to happen? But it has happened. It's at 15.67. It just got another 30 points to get up to the 16.05 level. Now that would be ideal. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen because it'd be one heck of a move out there. But that would be ideal. Complete the consolidation, form a TD setup, uh, uh, the nine count pattern, do it tomorrow on bar 10, um, get the spot volatility index down to the 13-ish range out there, then that could be the perfect setup for the next decline out there. But right now, everything continues to point to higher highs. And let's not get caught up in the fact that the NQ hasn't made a higher high, meaning taking out the September 8th or 9th levels out here. It already did its bullish tests yesterday and the day before and once again this morning. So that little puppy could easily go ahead and power itself up, at least get to the top of its daily profile at 80.31.75. But right now, I think, uh, well, that, I mean, that is a resistance area. It's really 79.51 to 80.31 out there. Um, so that's that's the markets. That that's really the take on the message of the markets. It says, okay, we just need to be careful, be observant because of the patterns that are in place here. There's nothing that says exit. There is most certainly nothing that says go to the short side of the uh, market out here. It just says be cautious and just simply continue to adjust your stops. Okay, so what else is it that we want to take a look at? There's no other questions that we have. Oh, I take that back. December hogs. Ruby wanted to take the uh, look at uh, December hogs. Let's see if we can get that up on our screen out here. So give me a moment to get down to the December hogs. And uh, so you say December. I happen to have up here November. Well, we're going to change that out for you. So let's go take a look at the December hogs. Let's take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart. Uh, look for its daily profiles. And what we have out here, so it's possible, Ruby, that uh, that uh, lean hogs have uh, found a bottom. Very possible. Now, it's although it's hard to read on my chart, uh, the bottom of the daily profile is 6066. The bottom of the weekly profile is 6076. So you got a 10 cent difference there. But here's what you also have today. Now, I haven't. I'll see if I can pull up on my other charts see if i i don't know if i've got december i'm i'm going to hope that i do um give me a moment here just well let me just try it this way l h 1219 i'll know i'll know momentarily no it did not like that so with that being the case how else is Stevie going to do? So here's here's what i want to do i uh, share with you a ruby today is a key reversal bar it appears to be a key reversal bar. It depends on the close. You see, the open was 61.77. We're trading at 61.77. In order for it to be a key reversal, it has to close higher by at least one tick. 
the high of yesterday and the low of yesterday have been exceeded. But in order for it to be a key reversal bar, to at least get back in the range to say the price is going to go test the top of the daily profile or center of the weekly at 67.16, you'd like to see some type of bullish candle. That bullish candle, right now, it's just a doji candle. It's a true out doji. The open and, the and where price is trading right now are exactly the same. So a doji, the meaning of a doji is that the market is tired whether it's at the upside or at the downside. Now, where that where dojis have the largest impact, this is coming from Stevie, it's coming from, from my years of knowledge and studying the doji, the doji candle out here, they work better at support and resistance for identifying turns out here. The middle schmiddle, they don't mean a thing. So we're close, Ruby. We're close. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Cosan Limited out here for Ruby and the uh, Tiger's Den. Ruby, uh, price is running into a possible resistance level. Uh, the resistance level being the top of its uh, weekly profile, 1499. Now it's only Wednesday, but as price is pushing into the prior swing point, which was from the week that began July 29th, that had 3.7 million shares. You're at 1.7 as we speak right now. From a daily standpoint, 
that high is uh, again 1499 August the 1st volume of 787 Teddy you're pushing into it with 409 thousand doesn't mean it can't push through it and above that level it's just you'd like to see it do it with some volume out there this chart here is not updating it just is grabbing through yesterday so my apology for that uh, but as we take a look at it knowing that it's moved to a higher high today is going to be day number eight uh, by day number eight of that TD setup nine count as long as tomorrow closes above bar number five out here uh, then it could also have a topping pattern at a prior high uh, with lighter volume so so uh, I'm not saying to short this, but, uh, you know, it does have an indication that we might see a retracement or a pullback into the 1440-ish type area out there, maybe 1405, the top of the daily profile. But here, with regard to Cosan Limited, it's up against support. The final issue we'll take a look at out here for uh, a SAT in um, is a ticker symbol, what is it, S-M-A-R. Let's go take a look at S-M-A-R. The question is, uh, can I buy a few shares here? So what you're looking for is some type of bottoming pattern to have taken place. Uh, this too is not picking up today's action, only yesterday's. Um, and uh, so I don't have a bottoming signal here just yet. So let's do this. Uh, oh, I take that back. Yesterday was wave number seven, letter G. So if you are, so, so it's pretty simple. You go ahead, you take the trade, you take a few shares, and you put your stop below yesterday's low. Do the proper position sizing. And you're going long because of smart sheet singing in the key of G. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Uh, stay tuned. David White's up next, your favorite polar bear. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a, a wonderful Wednesday and a moment of silence, as always, on this day. Take care.